Hey everyone, today we're going to do a book review. A while back, the Customer Success Pioneer book was introduced into the market. Kelly Lucas, who currently resides in Europe, launched this book and it's specifically designed for those who become either a team leader or are in charge of setting up the customer success program. That was the primary target. It was based on my own experience of doing just that, being the first CSM and then the first CS leader in an organization. It's based on my experiences and conversations I've had with other people since around the kinds of topics that you might want to consider if you're evolving, creating, establishing your customer success team and function and philosophy. But equally, and I felt that it would be valuable for anybody in customer success because it shares topics and themes and thoughts and considerations for things that you might just want to introduce into your job, into the team, work with your leader on. And even more than that, I was also hopeful at the time of writing that it might get passed around into other teams within an organization because customer success, as we know, is an overall business philosophy and imperative, not just the remit of one person or one team. So I kind of hope that there's something in there for many people. But yes, specifically, it was for if you're establishing and evolving your customer success function, but really there's something in there for any sort of level or team within an organization. I actually tend to agree because the book revolves around this dime framework. When you just look at it at a high level, I could be in sales and following this high level framework or any team that I need to build. And and this makes total sense. If design, you implement, you measure your success and then you evolve and optimize. The more I go through life and different areas of the business and in different roles, and also now as an independent coach and consultant working with lots of different customers, you kind of find out that most things that we do are basically project based and the dime framework whilst it's my own creation is basically a project map so whenever you you want to start anything whether it's in sales or marketing or product or customer success you think about what your outcome is going to be so you want to think about what your design is going to be you do some research you think about what the mission and the vision are and then you start making a plan for how you're going to take that design forward And then you move that on, you do the implementation phase. Again, you push that through into the measure phase. There's no point implementing something if you don't then measure it. Has it achieved what you wanted it to achieve? It might have done something different, but something good different, or it might just not be taking you in the right direction. And that's where you need to get to the evolve stage. You iterate, and that might be that you do more of the same. You take the next step that you need to take. I believe in cutting things down. So if you've got a big objective, break it down into smaller pieces, much easier to achieve and much easier to feel like you're being successful. So it might be that you're successful with the first step so you can go on to the second step, or it might be you need to do some tweaks to that first step. So that's what I mean by iterating and evolving. And that's the same of anything we do, stuff we do in our personal lives as well as our professional lives. And so therefore, yes, it absolutely does. Whilst it was built and designed and written for customer success, it could apply to any team within an organization. Absolutely. And what I love about the book, even though the framework seemed like it could fit and be applicable to any project management, the book is actually very specific around customer success. And one of my favorite things around it is these, like every chapter ends with recap of the key learnings and some action items for the readers to follow. So literally, if you're in the 90 days, this could be like a workbook. It's not even just like high level fluffy stuff, but things from your experience that you have done in this or that every phase in the dime framework that you recommend that they consider doing. I'm so pleased you picked up on that because that's exactly what I wanted from the book and a number of things really. So while I was going through the process of writing the book, I was working with a cohort of authors who were doing the same thing, going through the same process. And we were talking about personal preferences 
things. So actually, I'm a kinesthetic learner. So ironically, despite the fact that I've written a book, I don't learn from reading books. I need to have the interaction. I need to have the the practice and the gut kind of interaction with others, conversations. I love this, you know, podcasts, conversations. This is where I get my learning from. So I knew with the book, if I talked about certain concepts, there would be some people skin reading, trying to get, where's the point? What's the learning I need to take away from here? And there are other people who enjoy the journey. They want to read all of the considerations. They want to take the learning process step by step and then get to the realization. So I wanted to accommodate both of those styles, which is why there's a full chapter, but then there's a summary at the end. So if you're time poor or you've just got a different learning style, you can jump to the chapter roundups and take the pertinent pieces from that. And then if there is something that is interesting that you need to deep dive in, then you can go back and read that particular section of the chapter. So I appreciate that that's actually come across. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I think that was some of the things that I really liked about how the book was organized. When I tell you that it was labor of love, you know, we meet in person, this is what I'm talking about. Like you weren't just word vomiting. You were actually thinking, okay, how can I make it easy for someone to really follow this? So you had a framework and then within each chapter, how can I make it easy to digest? And so just to give some examples, you have a chapter around the design and then you take, for example, how to design even a specific activity like a business review to make sure that you maximize for your objective for this meeting. Maybe you can walk us through and those that have the book, this is on page 163. I would just like to say, though, about the labor of love and the organization of the book, that was the most painful part of writing the book. Many people ask me how long it took to write the book and there's many answers to that. It depends what you mean by that. So in elapsed time it probably took about a year I think but physical writing time was probably only a couple of weeks. If you added up all of the hours of physical typing time. Going back to the business reviews I actually want to ask you a question. When you say that you love this and you found it helpful what was it that jumped out about this particular piece that well that drew your attention I guess well with the the business review or just those sections where you have recap and action items the business reviews I'm I'm interested about the fact that that was the piece that you highlighted that you wanted to dig into yeah there's a lot of actually pieces in the book that I thought were really well written and thoughtful I just thought it was very interesting that that was the piece like you would actually pick a meeting type to describe the design phase. That was a little bit intriguing for me because you were essentially driving the point that this framework might be applicable for everything that we do in customer success. In everything, I have to admit. In everything. In, in the last three years since I came up with this concept, you know, this framework, I have used it in so many th- things. At so many conversations, I say, oh my God, that's dime. Everything needs to be, think about what the impact it's going to have. And I've, you know, given myself time to refresh my memory. The thing about business reviews, the reason I pulled out business reviews as a key learning is business reviews, QBRs, whatever people want to call them, are a much talked about concept in customer success. Years ago, it was you must have a QBR. That has to be part of your customer success methodology, your program, your process. You're not doing customer success unless you do a QBR. But actually, what's the value in a QBR? You want to be able to, you know, which is why I call them business reviews, not QBRs, because I don't think they need to be time anchored. I believe you should be designing your business reviews, like I say here, so that they're impactful and valuable. Your customers need to understand that they're getting value out of this. And if you're doing it from your perspective, that's not helpful. So that's certainly the reason why I pulled out business reviews here, because I think it's a key part of what people feel is important in customer success. But I think we've lost sight of why they're important and how we can make them as impactful and valuable as possible. Right. And what I love is that First of all, you say, hey, listen, one of the most important thing in the design is to think about who you're going to interact with in a particular activity or a particular phase in the customer journey. And then you say specifically for business review, it must be designed to maximize impact 
for the time available. So smart, obviously. And then to ensure that the key stakeholders want to attend. So then the actions. First of all, you say, consider the roles and the responsibilities of everybody that you're involved in. Are they like sales service? Do you need to have trained the trainer? So that goes like beyond the business reviews, obviously. And then you say, yeah. design your business review to ensure they're simple, effective, impactful, and value. So easy to use for your team to update, but also easy to assume an action by your team and the customer's. And then consummate the value that the stakeholders will always attend and actively participate. And that's got to be the primary objective of a business review. And I get that we have an objective, which is we want to make sure we're in contact with our customers so we're not losing touch with them. But you have to have the value for the stakeholders so that they will come to it and they will get value. Because there's nothing worse than turning off your customers by over communicating them and poorly communicating the wrong things to them. And then you have a, a whole other chapter just about how to manage up, I suppose, which is the <laughs> C-suite. <laughs> Tell me about your philosophy around managing up. Since I've written the book, I would say I've probably had many more conversations around people, culture and leadership. So my views have certainly evolved, I would think going back to the dime model and I design it as part of the book, implement it with my experience, measure it through the conversations I'm having and then evolve my thoughts and, and perceptions and actually some of the principles and learnings that I've had over the years. I think for me, particularly when I was writing the book and since, I guess, I've had a lot of experiences and knowledge of organisations where the management have not been entirely bought into customer success. They may have had it in the organization because they were told they had to by their investors or because everyone else is doing it. So why don't we? If they don't get it, that's a real uphill battle to make. But for me, when you're at a lower level or at a different level, it's important to have open and honest conversations with your C-suite to really understand where they're coming from. So if there is a company line or a company message, certainly many years ago when I was starting my professional career, I would have been naive enough to believe that if there was a company value on the wall or if there was a company message going out, that that was absolutely true and that everybody was bought into it. The thing that I think is key for me now is actually making those relationships with all of the C-suite and really understanding where they're coming from, what their perspective on the mission and the vision is, and therefore does it align with yours? And how can you help each other get to a common point of understanding and a common point of progression and, and success, I guess? I agree. I think too many customer success teams don't have a team charter. And in your book, by the way, if you have the book, it's page 198. You said the first thing that we need to agree on is objectives. Are we here to reduce churn, to increase up? So like, what is our main charter? Obviously all of them, but what does management expect as the primary result of investing in this team? Do you agree with that, Kelly? Absolutely. And again, it Everything comes back to, I love customer success, felt like I'd fallen into my spiritual professional home when I discovered customer success, mm. because everything's customer success, isn't it? When we work with our customers, we frame our relationship at the beginning. We want to understand what their outcomes are. What are their objectives? What will success look like to them? And, and we put our feelings into that as well we've got objectives we want to retain you and we want to grow you and we want referrals and we want your advocacy so we put that on the table and we come up with a partnership agreement that we have both bought into and that includes what are you going to do in order for us to achieve this and what are we going to do in order for us to achieve this and that's exactly the same with any stakeholder that you have including your c-suite if you don't understand the expectations of the others how are you ever going to fulfill them? And also, how are you going to know when you have been successful, when you've achieved the next step in that journey that you want to get to? So basically, if I were to put words in your mouth, you just told me, Iri, if you're the head of customer success, you should treat your boss and the executive team as if they are your clients. 
You need to align on goals. You need to define the success indicators of what does success look like. You need to have a success plan. Like what are the opportunities? What are the things that you're going to do to get there? And then you need to prove your value by measuring the right metrics and reporting on them on a regular basis. Absolutely. And not just your C-suite, everybody, all of your stakeholders. Stakeholders are internal. They're all of the partnerships that you have inside. Again, in the book about customer success is across the organization. Everyone has a contribution to make. Everyone has value to add and everyone gets success out of it. And again, from both sides, how does marketing know what you need from them and vice versa unless you have that success plan in place it is absolutely fundamental that you should be doing that with all of your stakeholders internally and externally and again when you were talking there about having the success plan figuring out the kpis measuring it monitoring it and evolving it that all comes back to the dime model again the measure the iterate the community yep. absolutely Like it's so simple, but some people just, I think, skip the parts that they don't like or they think would be too difficult to do. And I think I say this very early on in the book, customer success is nothing new and it's not rocket science. It is very basic common sense. But I think where the world has become very advanced in certain ways, I think we've lost sight of the fact that actually the very simplest things that we can be doing and the most human things we can be doing are actually what's going to give us the most success. This book has reminded everyone that none of this is hard. It's just we need to remind ourselves the things that we can be doing on a daily basis in order to get the best chance of success for our customers, ourselves and our businesses. Even if it is common and the framework is super logical to implement, sometimes the content we pour into each one of these phases is just inaccurate. And I'll give you some examples. So for example, you say 3.2, customer health. Well, I've seen a hundred mistakes around how do you design that? Or portfolio management. Some people just skip that as an option. Or they put portfolio management in place and then leave it alone. They've forgotten the measure and evolve part of this process. You can't just put something in place and just expect it's going to last forever. You have to right. keep revisiting it. If you're listening to this video as like portfolio management, <laughs> That's why you need to buy this book so that you get familiar with all these terminologies and really understand what is like advanced customer success strategy. Beyond that, I want to say there's a really cool, like lots of different resources in the books, like lots of different links, for example, on page 218 and other page here, where you actually have a link to templates that they could simply download to follow this book slash workbook. Yes, absolutely. Again, as you said earlier, the intention behind this book was to make it practical, to make it feel like a yeah. workbook, something that they could pick up and dip into. And that's the other thing. We all experience and go through our journey at different times. So your journey may take a different route to mine. It might be that you need to pick up this book and delve into a later part of the book before you start the early part. It was supposed to be something that you could dip into and read the relevant topic that you're currently focusing on. There was no way that when I did this myself that I started at page one and went all the way through to the end and this is what happened. This is how it ended up. You've got customers in place already by the time you become a customer success manager or a leader of the team and you've got the daily demands coming on. You'll be doing reactive work at that point because there's no structure in place or not enough structure in place. So it was never designed to be you must do this in this order. It was supposed to be a workbook that you could use as a support and a reference guide as and when you needed it. So yes, there's backup and support. Full disclosure, it is in the process of being moved at the moment. So it's not quite accessible at the moment, but there are <laughs> templates and people can get in touch with me in order to have the templates provided to them. Right. There is an email also provided yeah. next to that link. So if the link doesn't work, you can approach Kelly. I was going to include the link, but since the link doesn't work, then you have to buy the book. I oh, yeah. will include a link to the book so that you can download it or buy a hard copy. I bought a soft copy. Again, this is one of my favorite books because it is a workbook, because it's so pragmatic. Even though it has a lot of strategic advice, it brings it down to the tactical level. 
And so I think this is a great book for anybody that's a first time CSM. There is no head of CS. You could be it. Yeah. You act like one, you might get to be one. We've seen plenty of rising stars, nominees and winners at the Customer Success Excellence Award in EMEA 2022 winning just because they were just playing the part. And of course, if you just got a new team, even if you've done this before, sometimes it's just easier to follow a framework and say, what can I do differently than the last time I led a team? Is there anything yeah. here that would make me think about things a little differently or make sure I don't forget doing something? Well, actually on that note, I do I have a very good connection in the customer success community who every time he starts a new leadership role in customer success, he pings me a note and says, I've just picked up your book again for the fourth time because I use it as my guide to what do I need to remember? What topics do I need to think about? Where and despite the fact that he's done it a number of times already, he always picks up the book to see if there's something else that he can be using or something that he needs to remember that he's forgotten he did a couple of years ago. So absolutely, it's a, it's a re repeat use book as well. Yeah, I would say either when you change jobs or once a year or once every two years, you want to redo, re-optimize your customer success strategy because what worked two years ago may not work for the go-to market for this overall company today. I think it's a great structure. Kelly Lucas, you're absolutely wonderful. I want to thank you for taking all these hours and putting all your thoughts and heart into this book. It's absolutely one of my favorite ones. And I want to thank you for taking the time today to review your thoughts around the book, the history of the book, giving us some examples and a quick peek into what the book might entail. Thank you so much. Well, guys, if you want to purchase the book, the link is in the description below. Take a peek at it. If you want to be a customer success executive or you've been there, done there, you, you were about to get a new job, you're about to revamp your strategy, whatever it is, I highly recommend checking it out. If you want to see more books about customer success, we have a blog on our website with the top 10 recommended customer success books. So check out that list, download it so that you could read all everything that you need to about customer success and get better at it. All right. Like this video, leave Kelly a comment, and I'll see you at the next video.